Welcome back to Reliable Sources. I'm Brian Stelter. And I want to open up this question for us. Has the blanket news media coverage of the missing plane helped or has it hindered the official investigations into the disappearance? You know, one role of the press, as the word press implies, is to press for answers. This week we saw new leaks from government officials, we saw hopeful leads in the search, and we saw painful scenes of family members demanding answers from the Malaysian government. Some of those family members were asking the press to keep pressing. But the reality is that we in the media operate on a very different timeline than forensic investigators. Sometimes we scoop them, oftentimes we pressure them. There's no denying that sometimes it affects the investigation. And so let me bring in two people who know that better than just about anybody. Miles O'Brien, who covered the aviation industry for CNN for years and is back this month as CNN's aviation analyst. He's also a science correspondent for the PBS NewsHour. And John Ostrower, aerospace and Boeing beat reporter for the Wall Street Journal. And both of you brought up this idea for this segment to me independently, the idea that, uh, that these timelines are very different, the media timeline and the investigator timeline. Uh, Miles, is this something that's always true in any investigation like this? Yeah, the, the investigations take years and the news appetite is immediate. And I often say that the, the amount of facts available are inversely proportional to, proportional to the demand for them. So what happens is, as time goes on, the facts come in, but our attention moves elsewhere. We've moved on. Yes. There's been a lot of criticism of media speculation, but you've actually been breaking news on this story. So what is the single angle you've been honing in on or focusing on as you try to figure out what happened? As far as the actual press coverage of it, certainly what we tried to hone in on was getting past the myriad of things that, that it could possibly have been uh, and really get to what, what we could actually verify and know what actually happened. Do you have a couple of key questions that you're now trying to answer? There is, of course, the overarching question about where this plane is, but are there a couple specific ones that you want answers to which will lead us there? There are a few things that, that we've been wondering about ever throughout the course of the week. Mm -hmm. Where were the pings before those last corridors happened. No one has said definitively where the aircraft was believed to have been before it got to these two massive, massive corridors in the north and the south. And your sources won't tell you, it sounds like. It, it's just, it's not clear at, at this point uh, what that map looks like. Miles, do you have uh, a couple of questions like that as well? Things that you want to hone in on and know the answers to? Yeah, I, I would really like to listen to those air traffic control tapes. We have not heard them. I, I want to hear it from the point of departure through good night. And supposedly there was another aircraft that was trying to relay to them. And by one account, there was a mumble in reply. So there, that, that could be very telling right there. We haven't really seen much about the maintenance records of the aircraft. Was there any problem with the pressurization system is an important question, potentially. Uh, we've seen that happen previous with the Helios crash and the Payne Stewart crash. And also, the people who flew with these two guys in the cockpit and, you know, the 10 flights prior, what, what were they like? Were they, were they trying to land the airplane uh, with a short field procedure, for example? Was there anything unusual about how they flew the airplane? That could help shed a little bit of light on what's, what we're talking about right now. Making me realize how much we still don't know more than two weeks after the disappearance at this point. Well, the, you know, in the U.S., we're used to an NTSB-style template of releasing of information. And, and frankly, they have it honed down pretty well. They know how to run these uh, investigations in a very systematic way. And there's a very, there, there are protocols for how they release all this information. What you have in Malaysia is chaotic and incomplete, frankly. Mm. And as a result, it just has fed a lot of speculation. So they're getting better. They brought in some outside help and hopefully this will improve over time. Are there times, getting back to the question in my intro, about uh, when reporters may get in the way of these processes that oh, are yeah, going on? We, we are we're nothing but trouble for them, really, <laughs> because a lot of trouble. Our job and their job, frankly, are diametrically opposed. We have entirely different deadlines and requirements, and we, we, we frankly have stories to, that we must write and airtime to fill. And unfortunately, what happens is nature abhors a vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, the vacuum gets filled, and sometimes it gets filled with some wacky things. Do you keep that in mind, John, when you are making calls, when you are digging for information on this story? Well, certainly the, the, when looking at a story where, where there is no information up front, where you start with a blank sheet of paper, all you know is that something has happened. Right. And you, you start with that and you kind of work from there You can go, what do you know? What do you know about the air, type of aircraft involved? What do you know about the airline? What do you know about the region? What do you know about the potential politics involved in, in all of this. So you start with what you, what you know and what you, can, what you can verify with your own two eyes. And yet, 
we've heard so many different theories. Everybody's got a theory. Do these random seeming theories people bring up ever lead to actual reporting that's useful? You know, I had folks at this last week who were experts in satellite design uh, get in touch with me who were experts in search and rescue uh, to begin to establish the type of questions you wanted to ask. Maybe not the complete picture of, of a question, but certainly put you know, a bug in my ear about things to look for. Miles, you must be getting asked everywhere you go what you think has happened. Yeah, you know, pilots call it hangar talk. Uh, we call it speculation when it's in the media. But the, the fact of the matter is the speculation is what leads to the questions we all ask. And, and the problem is in a 24-7 news operation, you're seeing that whole process, warts and all. And sometimes you don't want to see the, the sausage being made, to mix my metaphors. But the <laughs> fact is these, th this speculation is part of framing the discussion of what the possibilities are. You, you throw out an idea, and then you start trying to knock it down. And pilots do this in hangars, and we do this, frankly, on TV sometimes. The pilots get mad at us, but they're doing the same thing. <laughs> John, you were telling me earlier, even your mother was asking you, OK, now tell me, what do you really think happened? What did you say to her? I, gun to my head, I don't know. I, you know, you, you look at the slate of facts you've got, and you can look at all the different theories that have been created. But and, is it true that yeah. sometimes people think you're holding back information? You <laughs> think more that you haven't shared in, in public? Well, I think there, there's a natural tendency for that. I mean, all, from our perspective, uh, Miles and I were just discussing this, or before we went on, that, that, that the idea is that you, you would be holding something back and you wouldn't be giving, giving the full picture. But, you know, certainly that is totally antithetical to what what our role is and our, and our jobs right. are. So right. to be able to provide that, that picture as, most, as clearly as we can, you know, and it's also important on top of all this to say what you don't know and, and, and ask the questions that you're cu still curious about out in the open because it has a way of, of, of generating more information and, and, and really framing how you're thinking about Absolutely. something. Absolutely, and I think online journalism has helped teach people to share what they don't know, to say what they don't know and express that. Yeah. And you had an interesting uh, career path as a blogger before joining the Wall Street Journal. Tell me about what got you interested in aviation. Well, I think I was born. I think that's, that's sort of where it began. <laughs> yeah. you know, not, to, not to bring up my mother again, but, but, uh, but you know, she likes to tell a story that, that when I was three, I asked for a second Fisher-Price airport playset. She asked me why. And I said, well, it, mostly because the airplane needs somewhere to land. Somewhere to land. <laughs> so, so, so it's always been in my, been in my blood. Um, and I've always loved it. I, you know, I had some uh, really wonderful teachers uh, in, in high school growing up, one physics teacher in particular who, who really helped guide my interest and, and helped, helped me answer not just the, quest, the practical questions about, about you know, what does it do, but how does it apply? I mean, how do, how do you take the, the science and the physics and really make it real? Did it start at birth for you, two miles? I'm, you know, I'm a third generation general aviation pilot, and actually both of my maternal and paternal grandfathers were, were pilots, so I guess it was just in my blood. I was, I was the same way. I had the airports, the whole thing, the toys, <laughs> the models, on and on. I guess it's completely in my blood, and it was a privilege to, to cover it for uh, as long as I did at CNN, to have that, uh, to be given the license to become an expert on something. Uh, and really cover a beat. That, that's actually rare, becoming rarer and rarer in our business. It is, it is. Miles and John, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Thanks. Pleasure.